Rahil, super excited to see you at Eat Denver. It's uh, been a pleasure having you. Um, I have been working with you for what, like give and take three plus years? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, right it's amazing to see how you kind of evolved from you having this idea and just building this amazing venture and now like, which is making waves in the AI and the Web3 space. Thank you. So yeah, let's just start with your journey as a founder, right? So how did you decide to become an entrepreneur in the first place? Um, well, I've always been kind of like a builder at heart. Uh, so I graduated in Canada from the University of Waterloo, which has a really good like co-op program. So you get to, you know, dabble in different like companies as you go through school. And so I worked at startups and I worked at big companies. So I actually ended up at Microsoft right after school. But about like uh, about two years after that, I joined my first startup with my brother called Social Gift, which was like a group gifting platform. And we would uh, integrate with other e-commerce platforms um, and a lot of people to like kind of uh, uh, gift a, a big ticket item for like their friends. Um, and so after that, I just kind of had this building bug in me and I just joined various different startups just to see how they work because I knew that eventually I'm going to start my own company. So I worked in the fields like AI, FinTech, Telco, IPTV, um, just to get a broad overview of, you know, technology in general and figure out what I want to build uh, my company. Which, uh, which year was this uh, like gifting uh, startup with your... Um... Um, about like 2012, 2013 is when I did uh, Social Gifts. So yeah, it was a really awesome project. We were built on, a, to get technical, on the Magento platform, which is kind of an old school oh, yeah, e-commerce yeah, platform. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we integrated with like Hudson Bay and some other companies as well. Uh, you know, the company didn't do that great in the end, but it, it was just a really good learning experience for me. I think the, the journey of an entrepreneur is like, it's never a, a day one success story. There's a lot that goes behind the scenes. So yeah. what were your key learnings uh, from that time that you felt that, okay, this is what I want to do in, in, uh, in the Web3 world? And what motivated you to come to Web3 in the first place? Oh, well, I think what motivated me to come through uh, to the Web3 space was the ability for something to be completely decentralized and the ability for something to be uh, transparent, you know, uh, has the security guarantees um, and, you know, is not overseen by some centralized authority. Uh, all like, you know, as the 2010s kind of started to end and then we got into the late, the, the 2020s, everything started to be uh, deployed on AWS, G, uh, GCP, Azure, and it was a very, very centralized world. And so um, I just thought I wanted to build something that was kind of decentralized, not owned by these or governed by these like big corporations. Um, and so that's what intrigued me about building on Web3. That's very cool. And, and again, like the, the journey of an entrepreneur is uh, never easy. And again, I've done a couple of startups myself. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, so what, what keeps you up at night? Like when you are kind of building your venture, what, what are the challenges that you see every day? Yeah. Um, well, I think the space is ever evolving and we're in the AI space, which is also accelerating at such a rapid pace. And so it's the kind of balance between like, you know, do you focus on what's the hottest thing right now? Or are you, you know, focus on something that um, or building something that you think is going to like exist in the future and have demand in the future? And so there's always this kind of like, you know, back and forth of going like, OK, we're going to build maybe um, AI agents right now. Or are we going to focus on something like bigger, which we think is going to be the data space when, when in AI and in decentralized AI. So, um, you know, we did foray, did a small foray into building a decentralized AI bot. Um, but still, AI and data labeling and uh, decentralized data, I think, is going to be uh, what we focus on going forward. Yeah, it's a very uh, interesting and tricky journey, especially in the Web3 world, because mm -hmm. the narrative changed every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, OK, the hottest thing right now is X. And then you just start chasing it, but yeah. only to realize that, OK, this was not there was nothing fundamental in this anyways. Yeah. And you just keep on hopping, hopping. So but yeah, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense is like, yeah, let's just look at the big picture, see what problem uh, are we trying to solve which will still exist like x years from now yeah and then you just start making uh, progress towards solving that while it obviously keeps um following the trends and understanding what's really going on in the market but that's that's cool yeah yeah i guess just that's like that's just the way uh entrepreneurship is is like you're always kind of evaluating what is going on in the market where's the demand um and also you know kind of building on what is the latest technologies that are available so yeah, it's a it's it's a awesome journey. We're very 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 excited to be. Yeah, there. it's actually amazing to see since uh, 
uh, like 2012, you mentioned until 2025. So it's like 13 years. You've been just like avid. Yeah. Working for your own startups or when other startups. Yeah. And yeah, just building this. So how long back uh, did you uh, start uh, Beside the AI? Um, and uh, what yeah. are the key motivations? So Decide AI kind of came out of an original product we built on ICP called Mod Club um, that we pivoted uh, into Decide AI. Uh, so essentially, Mod Club was content moderation as a service. Um, but uh, we thought that this, the content moderation uh, 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 spaces were really about like data labeling and uh, accurately identifying what is abusive language. Um, and we thought that that actually very, very like it pivots uh, very easily into the data labeling space. And so it was actually a natural pro progression to get into this, the AI world. And actually, um, uh, I found my, uh, my lead AI researcher, Jesse, uh, who uh, during the Mod Club phase, who actually started helping us build out AI models in the uh, uh, content moderation space. And so uh, we brought, uh, when we put him into Decide AI, we brought Jesse on full time and he can definitely pull, uh, talk more about kind of like the intricacies of the models we're building on chain right now because we're doing some really exciting stuff. Um, and uh, from there, uh, we just started to build more and more tooling to uh, uh, have, uh, you know, fully decentralized AI models on ICP, which is uh, something no, no other blockchain can achieve right now. Absolutely. I think this is an amazing segue. I think we'd love to zoom into like... Uh your roadmap, what what you're planning to build, because this is probably the hottest space in uh, Web3 right now, yeah. an intersection of crypto and AI, and you are one of the leading uh, teams in the space. So yeah, we'd love to zoom in and like what exactly you're building and yeah, and so on. I think I think I'd like to hand it off to to Jesse to talk more about the kind of the intricacies and the models that we're actually building out right now on chain, because you know he has all of the AI technical know-how. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Rahil. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Lamesh. Welcome, Jesse. Great having you, and uh, yeah, tell us the latest and greatest. What's um, what's happening uh, with this IDI? Uh, what is why are you here at the Denver? What uh, what is so exciting about this conference and uh, the space in general? All right, so uh, ETH Denver has tons of teams and tons of applications, and it's pretty evident that ID and civil resistance is one of the key applications in the blockchain space, and it is the first application that Decide AI invested work into. And so I want to keep building that out and get as much of a state of the art model on chain as is possible with the goal of reducing cost, increasing uh, data privacy, but also while this is why I'm so excited about the internet computers, because if you can maintain data privacy, but have a transparent pipeline. So like why, why, a decentralized ledger. It's like transparency and permissionless, permissionlessness and security are the, are the main crit critical aspects. And so we can provide transparency into data provenance, right? So like where the data came from, what's happening to the data. And so with what we have now, we have developed a state-of-the-art uh, facial recognition model. And, and it's one of the best, uh, I think one of the best currently already applications uh, for um. A unique uh, identity but I think I know that we're going to have better and better models and we're gonna be able to serve this as a framework for potentially uh, training the training a model on chain which would be the first state-of-the-art model trained on chain and then also for like data DAOs with like seamless integration between AI and data and I think it's like a huge area and then we've also done a whole lot of other stuff but what, what do you see as the biggest use case on why should people, uh, the teams that are building in Web3, uh, should be like focused on proof of uh, unique humanity, proof of personality? Yeah, so there's like some really uh, evident ones with like civil resistance. Um, and that's just for like uh, understanding the market and manipulation. So it's like people talk about market manipulation and what's going on and understanding what that, the flows. It's really important uh, to actually have like a real understanding of your user base. But then... Things unlock when you also are able to uh, use identity, right? It's a new form of uh, like secure login. Um, it's a new way to interact with data. So, so how people do all of these uh, like big giant uh, airdrops uh, and they have really no way to track if it's the same person getting that airdrop hundreds of times. And these kind of problems are amazingly uh, well solved with the, what, what you are building. Yeah. It's like that and that the uh, the the centralized exchanges, not that I am pro centralized exchange, but that they require understanding of the marketplace. 
So like just having a wallet distribution isn't enough to get on a sex. What is like the biggest thing uh, that you are here in the Ethereum conference? I know you are working on Solana and Ethereum integration. Yeah. Want to cover that? Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, so that's better handled by some of the other teammates. But I mean, the Solana integration is ready. It's live. Um, the Ethereum integration, all the work's done. It's just not um, like synced up yet. And now it's just integrating with projects, making connections showing them that we are the best identity solution for their, their task. Definity just released um, uh, like their new roadmap. Yeah. Um, I, I assume that you've seen it. So what is it? Uh, I have not. I'm like super focused on my own. But is there anything in particular that you are most excited about? I mean, vet keys. I'm, I'm really excited about vet keys for data security. And then like, I remember in the past looking at like secure enclaves and like some of the stuff I'm like roadmap for myself is like, uh, fully homomorphic encryption and stuff like that. But um, just like through, but talking to the AI development team, just uh, just tracking like the AI progress that like there's an LLM uh, direct connection through the internet computer. There's just always lots of stuff. And I'm always happier for uh, like cycle limits, instruction limits. Like it's like, it's like amazing because of the memory and instruction capacity already available and storage. But like just seeing it grow gives me like the confidence to keep building. Well, I think, yeah, some of those things that you mentioned, uh, the instruction limits, the wet keys, they are like obviously very, very uh, much in the like near term roadmap. Also, WASM64, uh, which can help you deploy these that, like. That's, one of the, that's trickier for me because like I focus on the candle implementation, right? And so it's like what's like already Web2 popular for, for browser based uh, development and WASM is like WASM32. So it's like I i don't know how much it would work, work it would be to adapt that. So it's like if you're building from scratch, like I know that Islam built uh, like his own custom uh, Llama 3.2 1 billion parameter model on chain. It's like super efficient, but it's like I want to be able to leverage frameworks for training and like existing things. And so it's like a trade off there where it's like we're divinity so at the cutting edge that it's like it's difficult to leverage the libraries and crates that I would like to. I think it's a good problem to that is. But uh, no, so excited and uh... Yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, it was wonderful talking to you. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you.